Sometimes when you adapt source material, you got to make changes. And Denis Villeneuve, oh, he made some changes to Dune 2 from the book. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about Dune Part 2. We're going to talk a little bit about the changes. This was a something I wanted to talk about, maybe give a little bit of context, maybe give my own look and interpretation, but we're going to, we're going to check it out. Screen Rant had a useful article for once, which uh, illustrates all the different changes that were made, and I did a little extra research so I can add a little context to some of them. So let's take a look at the 12 biggest changes dune 2 book changes from the sequel so we'll take a look at these and we'll see what they are see if we can add a little context i mean it's very close but there's there's some major changes and um some of them are a little confounding some of them seem necessary but let's take a look so the first one which i guess this is just for the sake of Saving time? I, I don't really know the purpose of this one. But uh, there's a there's a two-year time jump, at least, from the, in the book where Paul spends more time with the Fremen learning the ways of the desert. This is like maybe a year, maybe even less. For some reason, they felt it really important for Princess Urulan to say that it all took place the same year. Don't really know why, but... Uh, I don't know. I don't have a good explanation for this one. It may be because he didn't want to have, uh, which is one they actually leave out. I don't think they meant, maybe they do mention it, but his his sister, Aaliyah, has, doesn't get born, and maybe he really wanted to leave her out and didn't want to put her in, so if he put her in, she'd have to be born. This way, he could avoid all of that, so maybe that's the whole purpose. Um there's the whole fallout of Jameis's death. Now, Jameis's death didn't just weigh, weigh heavy on Paul. There's actually a uh, bigger story to it where Jameis had a wife and kids that Paul inherits, including his water. He inherits everything. The water doesn't just get put back in the well. It gets Some of it gets put in the well, but it also gets given to Paul. And, you know, I guess for the sake of time, they just had to cut uh, Hara james's wife and becomes paul's servant and she's actually kind of a not a critical character but a nice additional character that gives you a little more context around the fremen culture but she's gone count fenring is completely removed did you know that Leah Sado had a husband who's not in the movie and would her husband be super thrilled about her going and taking Fade's uh, seed so she could have his baby? Doesn't matter because he doesn't exist. I There was a character who was cut who, who claims there's an actor, and I, I totally forget his name, but uh, he was saying that he knew his part got cut and he felt very... Uh, he was really excited for it, thought it was really cool, but unfortunately he filmed all the scenes and they got cut. I suspect that that's who he is, Count Fingering. So, not that he's critical, but it just adds like a different wrinkle, gives you a little bit more context to the Benny Jesserit because he's married to a Benny Jesserit and he knows that what her duty is. So, kind of interesting. Yeah, he's an assassin and a relative or a mentat as well. So, it's just something interesting that they don't go into. Uh, Thuffer Hawat is completely missing from Dune 2. Didn't get it. I think he got cut as well. And uh, according to Denis Villeneuve, he felt like he had to cut him, like he had to cut it for time. And he wanted to make this more about the Bene Gesserit than having the Mentats around. So that's why some of the tone was a little weird. I did think that the Sardaukar, who were so fierce and such strong killers, were... Um, kind of non-existent in this, and, and that's one big change too. Uh, if you go back to, well, we'll I think we'll get there where Paul's there's Paul's son, and we'll we'll talk about that. I think that's in this list as well, but we'll we'll get back to that one. So, um, in the novel, Thuffer 
works for the Harkonnens. So, kind of interesting. And uh, his entire story is cut. Aaliyah, the daughter who is never, or the sister who is never born, she only shows up as Anya Taylor Joy as a as a brief, um, very small, just like a little tiny scene where you're like, oh, look, that's Anya Taylor Joy. What's she doing here? I think it would have been very difficult to work with a two year old child with the mentality of an adult. I think that would have been very difficult. And they, they're just like, oh, this is too hard. We don't want to do this. Uh, so this this also connects to Chani and Paul's first son. I I, th- I thought she was pregnant, but I guess she does give birth to him in the book. It's it's been a couple of years since I read the book, even though I've read it like five times. Um, but he decided to come. But the director completely decided to change Chani's perspective, and it, she doesn't give birth to a child on this one, which I think is kind of a shame because she nearly dies trying to defend him. And I thought that would have been interesting instead of having her roll around in the sand and be like, oh, I got to fire a rocket launcher. She could have fought the Sardaukar. So instead of them melting Siege to Bar with all of their blasters, they could have just had the Sardaukar drop in and attempt to kill Chani and actually kill their child, and which would have sparked more outrage and would have had the same effect instead of just killing her random friend for no reason you know, burning her alive with a flamethrower didn't seem to do much. So I think an infant dying would have been a little more tragic. But what are you, what are you gonna do? Let's just kill a friend. Uh, Chani, they make Chani part of the prophecy, which is not really in the book. She doesn't really bring him out of the coma. Her tears are not part of the formula. You know, there is no formula of Desert Spring. I. Uh, I mean, I guess it gave her more to do. I don't know. Like, I don't know what the point of it was. I kind of feel like they were just like, Zendaya, you know, let's not have her be pregnant and have a child. Let's have her bring him back from the dead for, you know, whatever reason. So she can be big mad at him because Paul is a mama's boy, ultimately. And that's what makes her big mad. Uh, Gurney gets his revenge on Raban Harkonnen. Uh... Glosu Raban Harkonnen, you may know him from such things as being Dave Bautista or Drax. Well, Gurney in the books does not get his comeuppance on on uh, Raban. In fact, the Fremen people do because they really hate Raban. In fact, Fade was only supposed to be brought in after Raban did his work to, to really... Raban was supposed to strangle put a stranglehold so hard on Arrakis that you know all the Fremen would absolutely hate him and then Fade would come in and, and make things better so that Fade looked like a hero but they didn't do that plot line either so uh and Gurney gets his 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 you know kill on on him but I that I like the Fremen people doing it a little bit better. Paul does not kill Baron Harkonnen. In fact Aaliyah kills him and the whole point of Aaliyah killing him is because she uses the Gam Jabbar and identifies him as an animal. That's why um, Paul says that line. I think because they eliminated Aaliyah, they had to kind of connect it because I guess Fade is a human, but you know the Baron would never have passed the 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 human test because he's an animal. Eh, I guess they made the change for time. It wasn't extremely satisfying, but it is what it is. Um. Fade Routh's death is different. Well, the fight's a little different because there's poison involved and there's there's a little more subterfuge and uh, Fade has a, a a trick implanted in his mind. Uh, her, he has a, a, a basically they implant a, a mental kill switch that that um, Paul as kind of a Benny Jesseric could have used to beat Fade at any point, but he decided to make the fight fair. And then um, kills him anyway. But in, in the book, he he puts a sword right through his chin, or his dagger right through his chin. I also don't necessarily like the crisp blade. They they didn't treat the crisp blades with respect. So every fremen has a blade, and those blades are made from the teeth of the sandworms. Once one of those 
um, blades is out, you're not supposed to resheath it without blood on it. And here, they're walking around with knives all over the place. They didn't look especially tooth-like. So I thought, and, and that was a lot of a little subtle nod to their culture that I think that they left out that they probably should have done. But what are you going to do? There's only so much time. I, I do think it's important, though, that they made these knives out of the sandworms, sandworms' mouths. Because it's interesting, because then it, it allows them to, to say things that are more profound about their culture. The great houses do not challenge Paul's ascension to the emperor, but I guess it's the only way to set up the great jihad, which they kind of leave out of it. But if you watch the flashbacks that are in the first part of the movie, you know, Doom Part 1, you'll get the idea that the Fremen soldiers go and they conquer Kaladin, they, they conquer basically every planet in the known universe under Paul's name. So... That's what you get there. And then Chani does not leave at the end of Dune. I don't know what's going on there. I don't know what they were doing because Paul makes a big deal out of telling Princess Uralon that she will never have one of his children, that Chani will be the, the mother of his children and his heirs, which is something that's really you know devastating to A, the Bene Gesserit, and B, to Princess Uralon herself because that means her line will be finished that the Carino house line, the line of the emperor, the, the family of the emperor will be finished. There will be no heirs, and their title will cease to exist. So I thought that was kind of interesting, and they they changed it. Why? To make Chani more of a biatch? Like, I don't, I don't necessarily get it. A lot of people tend to agree with me that Chani didn't make a lot of sense. I mean, if you read the books, it doesn't make a lot of sense. I felt like in the movie, it just felt rushed and unearned. I get why she's mad, but you have to remember, there is no battle between the Fremen for fundamentalism and, and those that don't believe. So, little strange, but either way, um, weird, weird. Don't, don't know where that's going because she can't leave him because there are other books to do, friends. There, we need to see some more, some s'mores. We would like to see more Dune. At least I would. Would you like to see more Dune? Let me know in the comments below. It gets weirder from here, friends. It gets a lot weirder. But I would like to see Heretics of Dune, for sure. And I know Denny Villeneuve wants to see it. I may not have said this in my previous video, but he already gave the score to Hans Zimmer. So Hans Zimmer's getting himself all sorts of ready but let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you want to see more? Do you like the changes? Did you like the books? I like the books better, but who doesn't like books better? I did really enjoy the movie. I thought it was really, really good. I really enjoyed it. But if you watched my previous video, uh, there might be a little bit of there's a little bit of heart missing, I think. So anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. In the meantime, catch our podcast. We do live stream it here on YouTube, 7:30 p.m. Friday nights, Eastern Standard Time. Lots of fun. Come join the party promise you'll have a good time you can super chat us you can join the channel for as little as one dollar you can feed a starving noob noob my co-host he's very starving and, and needs some more meat on them bones so thanks for checking us out like and subscribe but i am on to the next one